Hello, my name is Chris Charlton. I'm actually here to present my Form API 101 session. This is an introductory session on how to build forms in Drupal using PHP. So Drupal uses PHP arrays for all its forms. Um, the add node, add comment, edit node, everything. In fact, um, by using PHP arrays, uh, Drupal, the framework, has made it very easy to add, remove, and alter uh, any types of form types, uh, any, uh, fields, tags, uh, the attributes, everything you can imagine, and even um, get you uh, ways to do some custom validation and submit handling. Um, if you've ever done uh, forms before from scratch, um, in any kind of language, uh, you find that there's the client-side validation, which is usually JavaScript that immediately checks, did you enter enough characters? Uh, were they the right characters? And then on the server side, there's usually some server code that double checks uh, and even maybe cleans up some of the uh, uh, form data that is submitted. And Drupal allows us to do a lot of that stuff in PHP very cleanly. Uh, and quite easily. So this session will get you comfortable with those basics and as you'll see we'll even uh, cover some fundamentals of PHP. Uh, enough for you to pick up and go from to start actually editing forms right away. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons, or the two key reasons actually, uh, besides making things easy is uh, by using PHP arrays instead of HTML markup for forms like so editing some template um, it allows us to write less code. We don't have to write the opening and closing tag like we do in HTML. Um, maybe things that are repeated, uh, you know, stuff that is kind of um, mundane is handled by Drupal uh, and the Form API. Also, by doing that, it reduces uh, some immediate errors that would actually come in markup. Uh, I know some people think they make a simple edit to uh, any kind of HTML very quickly. And if they're not careful, they might actually uh, invalidate their uh, their page, uh, their site. So by using form APIs, uh, and the form API in Drupal, and uh, by it being based just purely around PHP arrays, uh, it's easy for any PHP developer to pick up, uh, and it, you know, you'll become a big favorite of it because you'll see you can actually create a whole form with a very structured tree array, uh, as we'll see later, and it's actually something very easy to come in and edit later when you want to actually make a change. Uh, so that's always a big benefit. So the types of uh, field types that Drupal offers in its uh, form API is basically everything you can think of. Uh, text in input fields, file stuff, uh, the menus, lists, checkboxes, uh, single radio buttons, groups, all that. Uh, and you can make your own, which is actually one of the coolest things of form API. Uh, what, what like CCK does, uh, you know, um, it actually builds kind of on top of this sometimes. But you can make your own widgets, uh, and it's really easy. So if you need like a date widget, you can get the date module, and the date module probably is just defining custom form widgets, um, and then calling it for you. So when you actually use the date module, uh, and that's actually activated, you know, and enabled in your Drupal site. Um, you'll see that the basics that you learn here today and uh, from building forms yourself, uh, you'll be able to actually pick up other modules and use them in ways that you probably never thought of because you'll be able to take advantage of their code um, since they're based around the Drupal API and specifically the form API. Um, so you can make custom widgets and it's actually really worth it sometimes um, either to alter widgets, uh, to expand on stuff, or just to make some stuff from scratch. and a widget could be super complex or super simple. So, if you want like your own version of a you know like drop down kind of thing for a day and time, you can do that from scratch if you don't like what's out there. Um, and they could all be one widget on one line without you having to make a bunch of different drop downs. But a lot of that stuff is kind of wrapped up in the little widget. And when you use that widget around your site, you're just calling kind of that widget ID, and Drupal kind of takes care of building all that other uh, heavy stuff uh, in the background. So, before we talk about Drupal, though, and using PHP, 
we have to just be familiar with what we're actually trying to accomplish and what the form API really actually does for us. So uh, first, we have to make sure that we're familiar with the form HTML tag. So this is, you know, just we're going to look at one slide about that and just get reminded about what it looks like. Uh, and then we're going to go through some PHP stuff. So you're going to learn some basics of PHP, just a refresher if you're new to it. Um, and if you're still learning PHP, uh, basically what I show you here is the extent of how much PHP you really need to know to do form building and form editing within PHP. So uh, as long as you learn some basics uh, and learn about arrays, you'll be able to move on. You won't have to get any more real complex than that. Um, of course, you will have to know about functions, but um, you should be learning functions uh, anyway if you're dealing with any programming. So here's the form tag uh, in HTML. We see it uh, has an opening and closing tag that is basically the word form. Uh, and here we see that there's an ID attribute for the form tag, and that ID attribute is uh, valued uh, to be unique hyphen form hyphen ID. Um, that's just an actual ID to um, make each form on a page, if there's more than one, uh, unique. So when somebody uh, does a submission, uh, the server uh, carries over this ID. And we're able to act on it. Um, then there's the action, and I won't get into that, but you know you should be familiar with forms. The action is where does the form go uh, when somebody clicks submit, essentially. Uh, so this form's simple. It, it has just the first name and a last name text input field. Uh, and we see that there by the uh, lines two and three. And uh, we see that there's a label, first name and last name. And I didn't put the label HTML tag here, which is a good practice to do, because um, I just try to make this pretty simple for, uh, it, you know, for an example. Now, the uh, text input fields next to the labels we see is uh, the input tag, uh, type equals text. Uh, and then they both have an attribute, name equals, and of course, first name is uh, its value is first name and last name uh, is the same. So what happens is uh, there's a button after these on line four. You see the input tag, but its type equals submit, and the value, which is what the text string is going to be in the submit button, uh, I just put it submit, but you could say go, uh, subscribe, whatever you want it to say, of course. And then there's the closing form tag at the bottom. Now we're going to see how much... Uh, HTML and PHP we really have to do uh, and you'll be surprised I'll let you in on a tip there's really no HTML involved here like I said earlier it's all PHP arrays so there's no HTML to build but we'll see what we actually need to do we'll come back to this slide so PHP is required when you're dealing with arrays and, and essentially any kind of Drupal development really uh, when you start to get more complex with your themes uh, you end up venturing into PHP. So you need to know the basics, which are strings and numbers, and I have a slide on that. Uh, variables, functions, I also show an example of those. Now, strings and numbers are exactly what they are, you know, just a value of some text or just a numer numerical value. Variables are the containers um, that hold those unique uh, types of values. You know, they, a variable will hold a string, a number, a variable could hold uh, an array, and uh, it can do more, but that's pretty much what you need to just understand is a variable can hold an array or a string or a number, um, and you'll be pretty good. Functions um, are actually just encapsulated code, basically little uh, uh, blocks of code that are given a special uh, function name. So you can uh, um, call it as many times as you want all over your application, anywhere in your code. Um, and you only really have to write that code once, and you just uh, run that code is run automatically when you actually just um, type out the name somewhere in your code. So we'll see uh, a little bit of some function usage and some best practices in Drupal uh, when developing uh, forms. Uh, so PHP arrays is uh, on the right column. You'll see that there's uh, these properties of arrays and uh, types of arrays that I have listed here. So uh, arrays are basically uh, a collection of keys and values. So it's kind of like an ID and the, uh, the name uh, of, you know, the form, but um, it, it's, they're always in pairs, and the keys, as you'll see later, could be a number or even a string if needed, and values are essentially, uh, they could be anything, any kind of value, uh, and that's very similar to like a variable. 
So a key is not a variable, but uh, when you assign a value to a key, it is very similar to assigning a value to a variable. Then you have multi-dimensional arrays um, in Drupal. Uh, when you want them to be uh, quite complex, you might venture into a term called tree. So a multi-dimensional array means uh, it has essentially one dimension. Um, but what does that really mean? Well, as you'll see in uh, one of the next, next slides, um, a, an array is essentially like an outline. Um, so if, you've, if you remember from like school, uh, you know, elementary school, when you had to write outlines in English class, uh, you know, you would you pretty much use like Roman numerals uh, or numbers uh, to make an outline, you know, one, two, three, and inside of uh, each number there was uh, a sub-dimension or uh, an indented list uh, and, uh, of bullets. And that's kind of what a multi-dimensional um, array kind of looks like when you have multiple bullets and multiple uh, at, at multiple kind of indentations, if you will, uh, uh, sections, subsections. Um, and, and it's kind of hard to see on this slide, but uh, of course, when you start to see the code, it'll make sense. So going over the PHP basics, uh, this is, of course, a string. Um, uh, that's the first example we have here. And we, we see that a string is encapsulated in uh, quotes, uh, double quotes in this instance. You could use single or double. Uh, they have different um, behaviors. But that's kind of uh, when you start to get a little bit more complex uh, with your um, concatenation of strings uh, or manipulation, I should say, of string values. Then you have numbers, which is the second example. And you see here, this is actually a valid one long number. Um, you know, a number could be a, a single digit, double digit, or have uh, thousand, you know, uh, kind of uh, hundreds and millions of thousands of values anywhere up and down the chain. Um, nowadays, with uh, 64 bit computers and uh, the large amounts of memory, uh, we're able to have very complex numbers. So uh, th this number might look big, but this is a very simple uh, low value number. Um, variables is the third example. We see a dollar sign here in the front of the long underscore var underscore name, uh, which equals a numerical value of 123. Uh, so the dollar sign is key. Uh, and we see that well, the dollar sign essentially uh, designates that in PHP uh, that it is a variable. Uh, so the dollar sign declares itself as a variable. Uh, it is uh, uh, given a name. And then, of course, there's a value given at some point, usually immediately. And then we have a function here. And this is uh, one of the most common functions, which is uh, hook underscore form. Uh, when you're building custom node types from scratch using PHP, uh, you would implement this function in Drupal uh, within your module code. Um, so this is a, a kind of a very simple um, kind of reference to the Drupal API here, but this is a valid function, and PHP itself comes with uh, thousands, uh, if uh, you know, if not many thousands of functions, um, essentially making PHP itself uh, almost a framework in a lot of ways. So when you're dealing with dates uh, or even uh, complex manipulations of arrays, uh, many things, um, it's usually wrapped in a function. So arrays is, oh, excuse me. Okay, so this is the PHP basics. And we're now jumping into PHP arrays because we already covered all the core fundamentals, uh, as I promised earlier. So now we're onto the second column of uh, PHP knowledge that you need to know and have to successfully manipulate um, and build Drupal forms with PHP. Okay, moving on. The declaration um, I have here, as you see, it's a PHP example. Uh, this is a, a couple of simple examples. They have, they have nothing to do with the Drupal API yet. Um, this is standard PHP. Uh, and this is me declaring two different arrays uh, in PHP. The first set of code, as you'll see here, uh, the first chunk, um, we see that I declare a variable with, you know, the dollar sign, of course, and the variable name is array underscore of underscore numbers. And we see that I have it equal uh, the keyword array. And with the open parentheses and the closing parentheses, I have declared a range of numbers. And we see I started at zero uh, with the comma that designates a different value or a different element in the array I want to add. So we see here 0, 1, 2, 3, going all the way up to 8. 
Uh, now, the number I have is the number 8, but I actually started from the number 0. Uh, you should know right away when you declare an array, an array has a count. It has a reference uh, number of how many elements it's actually storing, because remember, an array is a collection. So uh, basic variables that equal a string or an array, that's just a single value. An array is a collection of multiple values. So technically, you can actually shove multiple values, multiple arrays even, uh, I'm sorry, multiple uh, uh, variables, uh, values, and even arrays inside an array. So an array just starts to store stuff and it starts to get big, it can get small, it can uh, get deleted, um, it can get merged. So um, it's quite powerful and you can even sort stuff. But here we actually just, I declared a very simple array that has nine elements ranging from the number zero up to the number eight. And you should see that there are nine elements here when you count them, including the number zero. You don't have to declare zero. It's not some like magic special number to start with. Uh, I'm actually trying to keep these values um, uh, the same as their uh, what their keys are internally. So what we have here is the value of zero actually has a key of zero because arrays their index starts always at zero. So if I didn't put the number zero here in the front and not to try to confuse you too much, but the, um, uh, the key for uh, the key zero, the first element in the array, would actually have a value of one. And some people kind of get confused there. So it's uh, a good start to just, you know, do your first array of numbers and have it start with zero so you don't get too confused about uh, what the key and value, uh, keys and values not matching up in a numerical array. Uh, it's a silly thing, but when you get started with arrays, you know, you want to start this way. Um, so what I do in the uh, next couple lines of code here, um, so we'll see that I call array of numbers, and then I have this left and right bracket, and then the equals 9, and then I do the same thing again on the next line, but this time it equals 10. So uh, you see I put a couple comments there to show that I add an array item um, that equals 9. So I've added the value of 9 into the array, so a new, uh, a, a new row was added to the array of numbers, and that value was 9. I do the same thing for the a value of 10, but what I want to talk about, the key thing here is the left and right brackets. This is the syntax PHP uses. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of considered a shortcut syntax, but it's, um, it's actually, uh, you know, it's well respected, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, it's not like, you know, uh, so cheap um, kind of hack uh, or, uh, or kind of, you know, hidden shortcut of PHP. This is very standard. Uh, and the left and right bracket here, um, they basically uh, give PHP um, the, on the server a hint that uh, what you're going to do is you're going to essentially add another element or what's known as push. Uh, another array item and then of course it's whatever the array item is going to basically be the value that's given right after that um, so what we can do is and, and later and you'll see that we can end up seeing that there's a form that gets built in Drupal somewhere in the future and we would somehow kind of come in and add new elements uh, when we want to add form fields so that's what basically modules like you know the um, add profile fields module or anything that customizes profile fields or uh, I, you know adds things to the registration form it's essentially you know appending adding new array items to that uh, to that specific form and that's what you're going to learn later uh, so the next uh, set of code here is the um, declare new basic array of strings and the array of strings uh, we see here is basically just a B, C, D, E. Now notice the numbers array, I didn't put any quotes, and I could have put quotes around the numbers, but I, you know, since they're simple numbers, I don't need quotes. Uh, and that was actually for an array of numbers, but in the array of strings, I have to wrap each um, string value, essentially, with a uh, single quote or double quote. And uh, notice I did capital, lowercase, capital, lowercase, capital. That actually was 
uh, uh, me showing that you can uh, alter how the string is. There's no, uh, it is a, um, uh, case sensitive essentially, the value is um, case sensitive. Now these are simple arrays and in fact you can consider these uh, single dimension arrays and I want you to try to remember that word for later, okay? But um, these are simple arrays and now I'm going to show you a mixed key PHP array and we still haven't gone to Drupal yet uh, this is all still standard PHP. Now here we see that I created a variable called mixed underscore array uh, and it equals you know array with an open and closed parenthesis uh, and the 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 rows of the array, the records or the elements, the items in the array, uh, we see here I've actually um, spelled out for PHP what I want the key and values to be for each record, for each row in the array. Uh, by default, if I just gave values, PHP would designate numerical keys automatically. Um, so that's why index zero is uh, the first way that you get actually at the first record, the first row. Um, by designating your own custom keys, you have more control. Uh, you can even uh, kind of jump around and kind of, uh, you know, uh, go out of sequence uh, in terms of numerical key values. Uh, you can also inject string values. As we see here, uh, the mixed array, uh, the zero index uh, has a string value. The, the one index has a string value. But then the, uh, the, the two index is actually the word two, T-W-O, and we see that wrapped in quotes. So uh, PHP is not going to convert this to number two, essentially. Uh, well, it will internally, but um, it's not going to take your word and turn it into a number. Um, if you had placed this, uh, say, maybe in the 50th row, uh, but you called it, you know, you gave it the text value of T-W-O, two, um, PHP is not going to switch it up and move it for you, you know, re, uh, you know kind of uh, move it within the array. It, it, it's not... When you mix keys, um, PHP just kind of lets you do whatever. You know, it's like, all right, fine. You know, you want to mix keys, just go ahead. Um, until you start to actually manipulate the array, does it actually uh, just kind of stay hands off, if you will? Uh, so we see the uh, the um, technically the four key, the number four, is actually the fifth record because remember we are at index zero. So uh, we jump back to the number, uh, the numeric index, and uh, we kind of, uh, you know, we're playing a fun game here of, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, jumping back and forth between keys. Um, I just want you to be comfortable with, you know, that uh, or what arrays are in PHP, how, what do they look like, how to program them, and then, uh, you know, by being comfortable with this basic stuff, you'll be able to move up to full form API which requires mixed I mean I'm sorry multi-dimensional arrays so uh, if this stuff doesn't look too scary to you then you're ready to to move up here into the, uh, this next slide which is multi-dimensional PHP arrays uh, this is where you declare multi-dimensional arrays this is my example uh, that takes the mixed keys example uh, previously uh, and adds another dimension inside the first row of the array, the um, uh, the the zero index, as you see here, uh, has quite a few lines of code added to it. Before it was just a simple string. Now, the index zero equals, and you see with the equal uh, kind of arrow, like you know, kind of uh, insignia here with the code, um, the zero index of this array uh, declares a internal subarray. Um, by using the array keyword, as you see there, and then it actually has an array uh, mixed, uh, not a mixed, um, a, uh, a strings-based uh, key value pair, um, and we see that by uh, the key, uh, the key outline first, which is person zero, and its value is J, then we see the next uh, line of code, person one, and its value is silent Bob, and then, of course, we see person two, and its value is Chris. So this internal, this subarray, if you will, this um, other dimension, because it's kind of a, you know, um, 
uh, a child of you know one of the rows. So uh, it's in a row in a row to get to J or Silent Bob. Um, this is how this is what a uh, multi-dimensional array starts to look like in a basic form. Um, in some ways, uh, Drupal form API goes down maybe as, definitely as deep as a second dimension. Um, not so often, but it does jump into the third dimension. You know, I have some child, uh, children there. Uh, and then uh, rarely does it go into the fourth uh, dimension, uh, you know, with an array, unless there's some special um, kind of formatting needed for uh, an element or a custom element or uh, uh, some new module you installed. Uh, anyway, so this is a, a very simple example of multi-dimensional array. Um, by learning and being comfortable just with this slide a bit, um, you can move up into actually using Drupal's form API. So we've covered some very, very fundamental uh, PHP, uh, and now we can actually get into the form API, or as it's also known, FAPI. Uh, I didn't name it. I don't know, but I guess people like calling it FAPI for a while. So uh, here's a quick example in PHP uh, using Drupal's form API to declare a standard text field. So remember the uh, HTML form uh, tag that we covered earlier? Uh, there was a first name and a last name um, text input field. And this is th not all of the code for that form, because we'll get to that next, but this is just the first name field. So this is the PHP array. As we see that there's a variable with by the dollar, designated by the dollar sign, uh, and the variable is called form, and we see that open bracket and then uh, a closing bracket. But this time, within those brackets, we see uh, within the single quotes um, the, the term first name. It's uh, one word. And that, we'll see uh, how that plays in, because that's actually something very specific um, for the form API when you put something like uh, a name inside of the brackets um, for your form variable. Uh, and we see here that there's a pound type key and a pound title key. You see that within the quotes, the single quotes? Um, so before we saw just zeros and then we saw numbers, now we see the pound sign in front. Well, form API, what it does is, um, it essentially kind of tries to distinguish itself, um, the key words that are important to the form API distinguish themselves away from any other kind of key that you would have normally in PHP that might conflict. Um, it, it, it's presented by the pound sign in the front. So pound type actually means something to the form API, like pound title. And there's tons of these predefined words that have uh, a prefix of the pound sign. Uh, and we see the pound type equals text field, and we see pound title equals uh, a T function with first name um, string. You know, uh, see first name, two words. Uh, well, that is actually being wrapped by the T function, which is known for translation in Drupal um, for alt text. But uh, the first name value, uh, you see that the key title what this does is, let me show you in the next slide, these pieces uh, actually just fill in the blanks. So um, here's the form HTML tag again, um, and you see I've highlighted the label first name, uh, label last name, and then of course the, uh, the uh, HTML code, um, the attribute. Uh, name equals first name and name equals last name of the input field. Uh, I highlighted all those in blue. Uh, and then, of course, you see the submit uh, value for the submit button, the type equals submit, its value equals submit. Uh, I underlined and uh, highlighted that in blue. Um, so uh, what happens is, let me go back. So this form element here, we see if I, I basically created an array and uh, gave these values to type and title and um, by designating the type text field, Drupal knew all the code that it was going to have to write. The input tag, uh, type equals text, uh, and then name equals what. And that's, of course, <coughs> excuse me, that's, of course, the um, key given at the top, form, bracket, first name. You see it's one word. That's actually what gets uh, um, outputted as the name attribute value. 
So Drupal, like I said earlier, Drupal does a lot of this HTML uh, coding for you. You just have to kind of fill in the blanks uh, with a little bit of uh, form API code. So let me show you this entire form example, all this you know markup HTML done purely in PHP using Drupal's form API. But you're going to notice uh, what's underlined and what's in blue in the next example uh, uh, cor is supposed to correlate back to this HTML code. So just kind of uh, keep this HTML code in your head. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's look at this slide, which has the PHP code needed for Drupal to build that form, that fo entire form with all the form elements, uh, the two text um, fields, and the uh, the submit button at the bottom. This is all the PHP code needed for Drupal to build that. So uh, now this code will not just magically um, on its own. Uh, let Drupal know about your form. Um, because I don't have too much room in the slide, I actually need to um, kind of compress the code a little bit. So there would be other code in your module, but this code right here, you could actually paste within your module uh, and then kind of uh, get to um, output this form uh, with very little effort. So right here we have, as you'll see on the left column, there's this PHP example which is the function simple underscore form. Take a look at that. Now I've underlined simple underscore form because it'll actually connect to something on the right column later, but let's look at the rest of the code. So I have a function here called simple form. Now this function, by creating a function, I've now encapsulated uh, this form code um, into a simple uh, named function that I could use anywhere in my application. Uh, granted, like a registration form, you're only going to really use once, um, but it actually, when you start to have a lot of code in your module, um, it's really nice that your forms are separated into different functions, um, maybe even separate files if you can, you know, uh, get more advanced with PHP, and then it makes things easier for maintenance uh, in the long term. So we see in the simple underscore form function that I declare a new variable called form uh, that equals array. Uh, I didn't give any values to the array because they're going to come later using the form API. So the next line of code we see here, and you'll notice the first blue highlighted item, which is first name. So form bracket first name close brackets, uh, and of course first name is wrapped in quotes, single or double, doesn't matter for this. Um, equals array. So we've now, by using the brackets, we've let PHP know, hey, we're going to append, we're going to add an item to the array called form, uh, and its new item, its key is going to be called first name. Okay. Now that value of that key is actually a whole new dimension, another array. And within that, the two rows, the two uh, um, items uh, that make up that first name array uh, is pound type text field and pound title um, first name. And like we saw earlier, this is actually just the first name um, text field. So uh, the, what's highlighted in blue, which is the title and the ID of this element, that's basically the stuff that you really kind of need to fill in. Now granted, you have to write all this code, but by just putting in that ID and that value, wrapping it within the form API, Drupal is going to go and do all the HTML code for you to get the label, first name, and then of course the um, uh, value for the name attribute within the input text field type. Now, um, it, it's kind of it sounds long-winded, and um, now that I kind of say it out loud, but you know, uh, as you can see, what's highlighted in blue correlates to what the HTML, the, the, I mean, you don't have to write any of this HTML here except what's in blue. And it's not even HTML really, it's just some plain text uh, or some values. So that's, I, you know, you should be able to see by now how uh, Drupal's form API by using PHP arrays uh, and using special keywords with the pound sign and all that, um, you know, you get to build a lot of HTML code um, without having to really kind of deal with HTML formatting. And of course, with any advanced formatting of a form, 
you'd want to do the styling and, uh, and any crazy formatting through CSS. So Drupal is great about setting up the HTML for your CSS to really make it shine. Okay, moving on. Uh, so the form um, on the left side, we see that I added the last name text field, and it's basically the same as the first name, just a little bit of a change of the ID and the value for title. But the third element added to the form array is a submit type. So notice pound type equals submit, and then the title is submit. So that title could equal go, search, find, um, you know, uh, send, anything. Um, but that's going to generate the HTML button that we see here, which is the input type submit value submit. So, um, oh, I think uh, technically the pound type, uh, the value for pound type of the submit should have been highlighted in blue. Um, but you can see that it actually generates that third HTML text field I'm mean, sorry, uh, um, uh, field type within this simple form. On the right side, just so I can help you learn something uh, even more, notice uh, the uh, function name I underlined, simple underscore form. Well, on this right column PHP example, there's uh, what I have here is um, a function that returns uh, another function that gets called um, which is a part of the Drupal API, which is Drupal underscore get underscore form. And in the, uh, that function, I give an argument. Uh, the parameter um, value is simple underscore form. And notice it's underlined. Basically, Drupal underscore get underscore form is the function that Drupal itself uses to call any form in to get it the array, that whole array that builds up the form, and then to render it. Um, you know, into HTML when appropriate. So as you can see here, uh, you can make a bunch of different forms inside some PHP code, uh, make, give them all different function names, and then using Drupal underscore get underscore form, you can call in those uh, forms whenever needed. So I have a little bit of homework for you. Uh, the first piece of homework for you would be to um, look at these examples, to be familiar with these examples here, um, you know, this simple text field example, this uh, full example of the uh, whole form like this, uh, but done in PHP arrays. Uh, the homework I have for you is try out all the different form types. So at the, uh, the last slide, I have a link um, to the API documentation. Go to the form API reference and just check out all the different types. Select, um, I, you know, there's so many I couldn't even, you know, remember them all right now. But just try out all the ones that like seem interesting to you. Technically, you should probably try to like do an example uh, for every single type just to get familiar with them, and then you'll really be rocking. Um, but if you could at least just try a few that are common, you know, like lists, menu, checkbox, radio, uh, you'll you'll definitely start to really be on your way to start doing more advanced forms um, within Drupal. The second bit of homework I have you is to read and learn these functions. I have two functions I want you to read about and learn how to use them. Okay. The first one in a module is hook underscore forms. If you're creating a module and it's going to have, well, I bet anybody would say if it's going to have more than two forms or a few forms to implement this hook, I actually like to implement this hook even when I only have one form within the module. Uh, it gives you a lot of power. You'll learn about more of that power later, but just the simple idea of using the basic form, um, the basic implementation of this hook for your modules allows you to declare specific form IDs. So uh, right here we see in this uh, HTML example, the form tag has an attribute of ID equals simple dash form and I wrote that because I assumed Drupal was going to take this function name and uh, convert the underscore to a hyphen because that would be more valid in HTML and supply that as the ID <coughs> but when you use the hook underscore forms method um, 
you actually get to define specifically what those IDs are going to be. And you can even map a kind of really complex or simple form ID to a simple or complex function name um, and known as a callback. Uh, so it, <coughs> excuse me, it's uh, much easier if you look up this function in the Drupal API documentation and you'll just read that reference sheet and you'll probably get a better idea than what my slide here is conveying. Um, but of course, like every other hook, you want to replace hook underscore with your module name underscore. The second function I wanted you to uh, learn on your homework is hook underscore form underscore alter. This one's, this one's magical, this one's a beast. Uh, not hard, it's just, it's powerful. Um, so that's why I like to call it a cool, you know, uh, an, an awesome beast uh, within the Drupal API. And it's used by so many modules, hundreds if not thousands of modules. Um, this hook, as I um, point out here in the first bullet, bullet uh, this hook allows you to alter any form essentially. So uh, as a form is about to get rendered, um, your module or any module has a chance by implementing this hook has a chance to alter a form so you can add or remove anything that you want or modify. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Whew. I really need water. Okay, we're almost done. <coughs> Alright, now to wrap it up. So learn those two functions. Learn hook underscore forms and look learn hook underscore form alter. In the third bullet, I point out there's actually a special uh, variation of this function, which is hook underscore form underscore form ID underscore alter. And when you know a specific form's ID, you can actually target it to alter it by implementing the more specific version of this function. Uh, and again, when you read about this function, you'll be pointed to that other version, um, the form ID alter version, and it'll make a lot more sense when you see the example code. Speaking of example code, uh, where you're going to learn more is you're going to visit these sites here, and the first one is, of course, api.drupal.org, and you'll immediately want to click on the forms API reference sheet, okay? Um, then the Next link I have here is also quite important, especially if you're uh, getting used to Drupal 7, um, even Drupal 6. This is actually the uh, link to the examples project, which provides um, literally sample code of uh, almost every type, or I think by now it is probably every type of form field that can be built using the form API, um, built in the Drupal core, of course, um, and you can open these examples and learn from them uh, and they are uh, quite common uh, they're commented quite well so uh, when I was actually learning Drupal 7 I downloaded this project and it had uh, some of the more advanced changes and of course some of the simple changes um, there and it was easy for me to start picking those up of course the last two links are pretty common um, you're at Drupal camp so of course you know to learn more visit our Drupal camp site and Watch the other videos uh, from the other sessions. Um, now, the next steps for you would be, remember, getting used to PHP arrays, okay, multi-dimensional arrays, and then just practicing on by uh, the Drupal API uh, through um, by using uh, the different form types. So, remember, you want to try out lists, checkbox, and radio groups, radio buttons, all that stuff. And then you'll be able to really branch out from there. Uh, I think the form API, uh, and especially hook underscore form underscore alter, is a great way to um, get kind of into the flow of Drupal's um, rendering and processing uh, systems and uh, make uh, modifications, you know, kind of happen on the fly. Uh, and also to get you, you know, um, branching out into more things about uh, module other hooks, um, themes, hooks. Um, technically, a theme could even alter a, a form, uh, you know, uh, with a little bit of PHP code. So uh, keep learning some PHP, but remember you uh, don't really need to go too far outside of arrays and functions uh, when dealing with uh, Drupal's forms.